My name is Michael McWilliams, I think um, and I um, am presenting here about mission-based WordPress, and that is something about my new avocation, working as a uh, an Encore Fellow, and I'll explain that in a minute, in nonprofit capacity building. Um, so who am I? Um, my name, I have a, I've worked in the corporate world for 17 years. I'm probably wandering, that's the problem. Just hover like this, would that be better? I tend to, you know, I'm used to lava layers. Um, <clears throat> I spent 17 years in the corporate world, uh, finance and manufacturing, uh, in technology, had my own firm <laughs> during the internet bubble, rode the bubble up and down. Um, and uh, when my youngest son graduated from college, I uh, decided I had had enough of that, and I um, learned how to manage a nonprofit. And I left that business, and it was funny because I went to my wife, who had endured the roller coaster during the internet times, and said, "You know, I kind of want to get into policy and nonprofit world. I kind of had it with my business, and um, this is my joke of the day." And um, in front of my entire family, she turned to me with a drink in hand and said, "I have really had it with your business." So it was it was unanimous. Um, um, Went to did some work in public policy with the uh, think tank Mass Inc, in which I was responsible for getting a lot of complex information out there, largely through the web. Uh, worked for a nonprofit called Jumpstart for a while, and then went overseas and worked for an NGO focused on the international water crisis. And I worked out of Stockholm and traveled the world, and I was responsible for about five different websites running. I didn't run them, I didn't do them personally, but I was directing them, and that was quite a challenge. Learned a lot. Came back, my wife did not take to Stockholm, Sweden. She's from Hawaii and um, pretty low in Aloha out there. Anyway, here I am. Um, so, what is a mission based organization? A mission based organization is a nonprofit, it's an NGO, it's a, it can be a faith based organization, a charity, basically any organization that has as its bottom line trying to affect change as its principal goal as opposed to make money. Although, ironically, one of the biggest challenges in the nonprofit world right now is making money to keep businesses going. We're going to talk a little bit about that. So, here's the agenda today. We're going to talk a little bit about WordPress in general in the nonprofit world. Maybe try to draw some distinctions. Uh, sort of go into what the compelling elements of a website are in general uh, for a nonprofit entity. I'm going to talk specifically about landing pages. Now, landing pages are a tool that um, probably is one of the primary tools for advocacy, fundraising, and engagement for the nonprofit world. They use them in the corporate world, of course, but landing pages are really mission critical for any nonprofit looking to engage. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about online fundraising. You could spend a week on online fundraising, and there are people far more expert on it than I. I'm going to give you some resources for that. Same thing for data visualization, which is really the bleeding edge of the field in the nonprofit world now. A lot of use of infographics that don't work, interactive graphics that kind of show complex situations that may or may not communicate. It's a problem. Then I'm going to get into my pet peeve, and that is the fact that most nonprofits and NGOs have miserable newsrooms, if they have them at all, and it's almost impossible, often, to find anybody to talk to. Um, tell me if I'm wrong. Um, <laughs> finally, I'm just going to do a little, a little overview of comparison of what uh, uh, you know, WordPress as a, what I think is the best storytelling platform for the nonprofit world, and then hopefully get into some discussion. I should warn you, my uh, presentation last night went 75 minutes. My wife timed it, didn't say a word, and then had a beer and laughed at me. <laughs> so um, we're missing quite a bit. Um, and I've cut out quite a bit, but I think I'm still going to run. So um, I've got the guarantee from our folks here they're going to give me the cutoff. Um, here's how we're going to handle it. Talk about the best website practices for nonprofits how to handle them in WordPress if we have any specifics, and then just some useful resources. I'm not going to get too much into the weeds about specific tools because I don't want to give you the impression I have extensive expertise or preferences, except in a few cases. <laughs> now, what do most nonprofits need in a website? There it is. They need easy management, first and foremost. They are strapped for time, money, people. They're all underpaid. Um, needs a modest learning curve. No one wants to sit down and spend weeks trying to learn something, at least just basically putting the content online. Uh, they need power and scalability these days. No longer is a nonprofit website the poor sister in the world. It's got to be as good as the corporate world. They need reliable support. It 
needs to be mobile. I don't even know why I have to mention that anymore, but it needs to be mobile just like everybody else. And of course, it must be low cost. Um, that sounds like a familiar uh, platform, doesn't it? So what are the best practices for nonprofit websites? In particular with WordPress here, this is about word, working with WordPress. First and foremost, you need to get the board on board. Your board of directors is comprised probably of a lot of people from various areas who may or may not be familiar with WordPress. If they're from the corporate world, often from the big financial world or something like that, they may think of WordPress as a blogging platform. They may be still stuck in that, um, <clears throat> that way of thinking. Um, you need to explore the ecosystem from the start. You do, a lot of nonprofits I've found, and I am finding, they build the site, they manage it, and they don't really think expansively about how they can continually improve it or what they might actually do if they really extend the platform to its great capabilities. Um, and that gets to the point of approaching it as a CMS as opposed to a blogging platform. You really have to dedicate staff to the project. It doesn't run alone. You can't have somebody who does, does it as a hobby. Someone has to be, or maybe several people have to be responsible for keeping even a WordPress site going. Um, you don't want to farm out the content to anyone else unless you have a good feeling for a contractor. But someone has to take responsibility for it, um, just like any other site. It isn't that seamless. And given the limited staffing in most nonprofits, there is a tendency to just have it running. And if it's not making, if it's not causing problems, no one's complaining, they leave it alone. It's a recipe for disaster. I've seen it so many times. You really need to build the fundraising, online fundraising, right into the platform. Right, into, right from the start, you can't think of something you bolt on later on. If you're developing a new site with WordPress or any other site, but especially with WordPress, you really need to think of fundraising right at the start. We'll get into that in a second. Um, these goes without saying you need to have social media integration, but it really has to be smooth because social media really has become mission critical to the nonprofit mission. That's how you get advocacy, that's how you build awareness, it's how you alert people to ongoing problems and crises and news. And finally, this doesn't need to be said, but boy, it needs to be emphasized. Keep things current. Um, you've seen it. You go out there and the, the, the content is six months old, two months old. It doesn't work. Uh, you need to be, uh, keep it alive, you need to keep it engaging. A lot of this stuff is simple. Here are some general resources. I'm not going to go into any of them, but they're really valuable for nonprofits. Um, and I, I will um, send you this. This, um, if, you, if you contact me afterwards, I will send you a copy of this, so you have um, uh, you know, a list of what I think are really good resources if you're working in WordPress, especially for nonprofits. These are things that I found are very helpful. At the bottom <clears throat> is the king. That's Google. Um, Google is your friend here. Um, it knows more than I do. It'll lead you in many directions at once. Uh, it can get the advice of experts in every specific area. So, looking at a good nonprofit website. A good one. Just a good one. Acceptable. It needs an engaging homepage, of course. It needs clear navigation, of course. It needs to be up to date, as we said. It needs to be simple language. That's not always easy. Um, you really need to look at the language and see if you are confusing or adding too many words into your story. You want people to get the picture right away. Uses a mix of images and media, not too many, and then often, uh, and really makes an effort to offer quick access to critical information for supporters and stakeholders. Now, how about a great nonprofit website? It sort of notches it up some. It, wrote, it relates to its audience. It understands what they want. It really <clears throat> resonates with them right from the start. And that starts with the first impression it makes on the home page. It's really got to strike them. It can't be something that just sits there. Uh, you can't make them work. You need to have, whatever your mission is, it should be made perfectly clear at the home page and all the top level navigation. This is something many nonprofits don't do well, and that is they don't connect the solutions to the problems you're solving. So you need to highlight the problem you are solving, but also highlight as early as possible in that website architecture what solutions your organization provides to the problems. Otherwise, people will just see you as another organization, you know, whining about a problem. And also, of course, it has elegant navigation. And I mean elegant. It's got to be smooth, reliable, can't scare people away. 
um, it needs to get people the confidence to explore the rest of your site. There is a bold call to action on almost every successful nonprofit website. Like call to action, it could be donate, it could be call your senator, it could be get engaged, join our membership. Whatever the key call to action, it should be prominent on the home page and there should be a button on every single page in the site. That's just good practice. It offers useful infographics. Now, <clears throat> I've seen lots of infographics that aren't so useful. And you really have to, we'll go into that in a second, but it really have, you really have to be very selective about the infographics you use. They really have to answer a specific question. And we'll get into that in a second, but you really need to be sure of that. Otherwise, you're wasting valuable space and you're annoying your visitors. Um, it's current and urgent. Um, current is easy. Urgent is maybe not. You need to make sure that if you are solving an urgent problem or an important problem, the urgency comes through in the design, the colors, um, <clears throat> the structure of your website, but particularly the content. It's too bad. I had to cut out a whole section on the use of color on the website and particular the home pages. And we could go into that probably some other time. But it really is useful, how, and you'll see how, to, how many organizations create with orange, for instance, a sense of urgency. Uh, red signals alarm. Green signals money, wealth. Um, black signals stability, solidity. Um, it's got to play well with social media. I think you all know that and it uses media appropriately, like I said before. So WordPress really is a good platform for all that, for all these things. It's got the plugins, the journal-based posts are excellent for keeping the current news out there. The pages provide stability. They anchor the site for core elements. The themes, of course, make it look good, and you can, you can really invest in that. I've, I've invested in it. I've used everything from the basic ones to some expensive ones. And if you're careful, you do get you what you pay for, sometimes not, so be careful. Um, it's mobile ready, of course, and this is really important. It's largely bug-free when it comes to social in you know, integration. I say largely bug-free because I found some bugs. I've seen some plugins that don't work as well as I particularly like them. Some examples made with WordPress. Not all the things I'm gonna show you here are WordPress. But these are all sites that were made with WordPress. I like this because it's simple, elegant use of color in black and monochrome, um, simple app navigation, nice site. There's another one. Um, look at those faces. Happy, engaging. Um, there's the donate button on the top. This is a, uh, an idea of a regional one that takes advantage of uh, the Rhode Island, it's Rhode Island um, uh, AIDS, and it takes advantage of the nautical theme in Rhode Island and gives that regional feel. But it's got some news on it, it makes good use of color, uh, but it doesn't scare the, scare the viewer away. This is one of my favorite organizations, Citizen Schools. Now this is kind of a newsy site, but it's clean. And of course, they've got a beaming child sitting there. Um, kids, kids always work. Um, everyone loves to look at kids. Um, but look at the use of colors, the simplicity. Uh, it's a great organization. I've worked with Citizen uh, Schools, uh, and this, this really reflects the, the integrity and the solidity of that organization. Um, this is a community foundation. Now, community foundations, if you're familiar here in Boston, we're talking about the Boston Foundation. Um, this is the Co Community Foundation of Columbus, Ohio. A difficult challenge because most community foundations of that size have diverse constituencies and stakeholders. So the front page has really got to be kept current. And they have news briefs. So they're really addressing a lot of stakeholders, a lot of constituents, probably some of the, some of the populations they serve. And of course, they're talking money right at top. Thank you, Columbus, for 15 million. Um, which of course is the job of a community foundation. A simple organization like the Population Media Center, which solves, which aims at a very solitary, sort of well-defined problem, really merits a very simple, solitary, striking, elegant photo. What can I tell you? That's quite the web page. And this is Samaritan's Purse. Now, the use of color is interesting here because Samaritan's Purse is, I believe, a faith-based organization, hence the use of purple. Um, but the photo there pretty, gives you a pretty good idea of what they do. Here are some nonprofit 
web design resources that I take advantage of. I happen to be a local organizer and leader in the um, local chapter for N10, the 501 Tech Boston Club. Um, we produce a variety of events, some of it's just plain networking, others are thematic and we have speakers. Uh, we've got quite a lineup coming this, this year, by the way, so check us out. But the national organization just revamped its own website, <coughs> very useful, lots of good information. NetSquared is an international organization. Um, they have a Boston chapter, a little more technical than N10. Um, Nonprofit Tech for Good is just a great website. I, I go to it all the time for information, and they always have great articles. They often uh, curate articles from other sources, but they often have a lot of great information. And of course, there's WordPress. Uh, WordPress probably should be the first place you look for almost anything, because it's a great place to start. Now, landing page strategies. I'm going to talk about landing pages simply because they are so important to nonprofits. They're not a home page. They have a specific purpose, and that is to engage your audience or the audience in a specific activity. And that can be campaigns, initiatives, offers. It can be simple, elegant, striking, and must be <coughs> must feature a call to action. Otherwise, there's no point in it. It's all about the call to action, and it's got to be mobile. That's a little tricky sometimes with a um, with a landing page because the call to action uh, really has to be tested on a variety of mobile platforms and how it looks, you know, using responsive design. Um, but so, what do you use a web landing page for? In the nonprofit world, you use it to build man, land, uh, mailing lists, and that, of course, is called a squeeze page. Um, I love that term. Use it to recruit members. Use it for fundraising. Advocacy, events, big news, response to any sort of online action. And that's something we're going to get into when you talk about a thank you page. Because um, the thank you page is a great example of a landing page that can do a lot for a nonprofit. So, examples. Well, here we have a retirement plea for Beulah the Elephant. Um, Change.org is probably one of the leading proponents of landing pages simply because that's all they do. Um, if you sign up for them, they, you, they keep sending you emails on all sorts of things. I, I respond and support some of them. They're not, you're usually not asking for money. They're looking for mail, you know, to develop lists to make petitions. It's about petitions. So look at the color. It's orange. About petitions. Um, I did not respond to Beulah. I figured she could make our own, her own retirement plans. Um, but uh, anybody who's interested in animal exploitation probably would have responded to Beulah. That's the current one, by MoveOn.org, good old MoveOn. MoveOn's been doing it for a long time. They use this design, much to my consternation, but it works. They keep using it because it works. I don't particularly like this one because it's misleading. Um, they want you to take down the flag. Well, the flag, then at the top, they tell you they just took the flag down in the South Carolina Capitol. So you have to read through all this to discover they're actually working to take it down throughout the South. The Capitol was just the beginning. That doesn't come through here, but they stuck to their, their um, <clears throat> the guns on their design, and of course they want you to, do, to donate in there. So they're looking for everything there. There's a major commitment here. It's, it's more than a squeeze page. There's, there's a major commitment, and they want you to look at that video. So there's a major commitment of time that supports the major commitment they seem to be looking for. This is one that I just got. Um, I signed a petition for all the Moms Demand Gun Action, a very sensible organization in my view, and they were looking to get the sports chain Cabela's um, to uh, do the right thing regarding uh, registration of guns. I signed up and I got this. This is elegant. It's a, it's a thank you page, but it's something more. It enables, you to ex enables them to extend your interest and activity through social links. I can't emphasize this enough. Um, <clears throat> if you want to optimize your web presence with landing pages, your thank you page, you gotta think about how you use your thank you pages. And this is just one example. We'll talk about them. Um, probably the most striking one to come across my desk this week was uh, Who is Burning Black Churches? This is a simple squeeze page. They're not looking for money, they're looking for you to join the action. Um, it's a dramatic photo. It explains a rather <clears throat> awkward acronym, which I did not understand at first. But uh, there, it doesn't take much work, but they get you involved. Um, my guess is it was very effective. I don't know yet. It just came out on the, uh, online about two days ago. Ah, yes. I wonder, <clears throat> just wonder, if the Democrats would have used the president as the main image a year ago. Yeah. Uh -huh. he's, he's cruising now, you know, and they're trying to fire up the, the, the faithful. 
uh, with him because uh, he's uh, he's on a roll, uh, at least politically and in terms of the polls. Uh, but they're looking for you to sign up. There's my name. God help me. Uh, and I am not in because I'm already in. And guaranteed, this is a squeeze page. That's all they want. But you're going to get squeezed if you've not joined any of these. You, the next day, you're going to start to get appeals for money. You're going to be hearing from Joe Biden, Eric, your senators. You're going to be hearing from um, the president himself, quote unquote. Um, Hillary will chime in. Anybody who has an interest in furthering the Democrats' cause, and the Republicans do it too. I do think the Democrats are doing it a little more effectively. But um, I've seen some conservative causes. NRA is a fantastic example of how to use advocacy online. Um, whether you agree with them or not, they're doing, they really know how to energize their base through the use of landing pages. So guidelines, stick to the single point. Brand, it should have the brand, but it should be distinct from the web page. People should not mistake it for the web page. Unfortunately, I've seen a few web pages that are actually the same thing as, they're basically squeeze pages. And to me, that's, that's a missed opportunity. You're confusing your viewers. You are probably um, making yourself look a little too aggressive. Keep the, keep the landing pages and the landing page message distinct from the home page. Ask only for essentials, whatever you want. Move on is really pushing the envelope there with money and with all the details. Be clear. Um, look on for the, again for that move on one. I didn't understand what they were doing. I didn't understand it until I read that they were looking for further action. Um, use a minimal or no menu, top menu for navigation on top. Everyone says this, and the reason being is you don't want people tempted to leave to other parts of your website without looking at your message and responding and answering the call to action in some particular way. Um, <clears throat> this, is, this is critical, and I think we should talk about it a little bit. You go long when the ask is substantial. By long, it means you can have extensive, more extensive content when you're looking for a lot of money, a lot of involvement, a combination of the two, or three. Uh, but when you have a simple squeeze page, keep the copy really, really short. They're everywhere. The word landing page tools are everywhere. They're built into themes. You get plugins. Um, there are special templates all over the place. Um, look them up on WordPress. You can find them on Google or Bing. They're everywhere. They're not hard to find. And um, there's one for every flavor, every single purpose. Online funding. Um, as I said, I could spend a full day on this and still not really even touch the surface of what the experts know. But here is a general, su here's a general summary of the advice from what the experts are saying. This is what I believe. First and foremost, and this is important for WordPress users, embed the donation process in the site. Don't make it a bolt-on. That's why you really should think of it as a fundamental function of the site, not just an extra thing. Um, make it mobile and bulletproof. There should be no worry when someone's using it on an iPhone or, or a handheld device or an iPad or an Android phone. Bulletproof, test it. Um, there should be a button on every page. I think I said that before. A donate button really needs to be on every seat. Optimize your thank you pages, and we're going to go into that in a second. Probably the most important thing you can do, and you'll see why. And strategically sync with social media. Does that go without saying? Sure. But you'll see why it really needs to be emphasized, because sometimes people forget, sense that when they've made, taken the action, organizations, when people have taken an action, they don't need to follow up and, get, and make use of that asset and the, the equity and interest that built up in that action in the, in the involvement of the visitor. So, how do you optimize the thank, thank you page? Here are just some suggestions. You might be able to come up with others. Uh, call, a simple call to further action. Uh, you can take a poll. Who are you? Why did you do this? Why are you interested? Just a basic poll, not an extensive one. Um, you can offer other ways to get involved. That's the one I like. Uh, after they've made a donation of money, um, a thank you page might say, well, how about uh, getting our credit card? Or how about um, going on to Amazon Prime and making all your purchases go to our organization? You'll see an example of that with uh, WWF in a second. Um, a thank you video always works. Uh, and social network sharing, which I think is absolutely, completely essential, and it should be seamless. So here are some examples. Here's that one again from Long's Demand Action. I like this because it's simple. It didn't scare me. 
I used it. This is a, a more elegant one from Oxfam. It's a thank you for your gift. It's almost like a note you'd get in the mail. That's basically what it is, but they've enhanced it. If you look on the side there, there's a video. It is probably from some, shall we say, appreciative uh, benefactors of Oxfam's work, thanking people. And um, I, we can't play it here because we don't have the time. But that's a, an elegant use of video as a thank you uh, in your thank you landing page. And a use of video in general. Here's the more ways to get involved from WWF. They, uh, let's see, uh, they want you to get the iPad app, uh, support the, uh, when, you know, on, through Amazon Prime, and of course, get their credit card. Um, it's simple, I've got three basic choices. You can take, take it or leave it, but it's out there. WWF, by the way, is very, very successful at this type of thing, so I'd take a hint from them. Um, it's online fundraising and WordPress really isn't that horrible or challenging, uh, and that's because there's a wide array, array of plugins and themes. Most importantly, it, everything works with PayPal, Network for Good, Razoo, all those donation processing uh, systems. Um, this is really important, I think, and the integration with Blackbot and Salesforce. Blackbot, of course, is the, um, they own um, Razor's Edge, which is sort of the gold stand -in, standard in uh, donor management software. Um, and of course, Salesforce is now, by the way, this is a little nugget of information, Salesforce is now moving very aggressively into the nonprofit arena. Um, if you're a 501c3 organization, uh, the, fi the Salesforce Foundation, um, you just have to apply to them, they'll give you 10 free seats of Salesforce. You will pay for customization, you will pay for all the, all the nuts and bolts and all, all the, the, the bells and whistles that, that you might need, but it's a deal. Uh, and Salesforce, is, my preference personally is Salesforce. I, I feel that Razor's Edge has fallen behind, but it, and it costs a fortune. Um, for the smaller systems, there's open source development of APIs. WordPress works with all of them, and any decent outside developer or internal developer can help you do that. Probably don't need it, because I think almost every one of the platforms would take pains to, to uh, make sure that their, their platform works with WordPress. It's that dominant now. Here are some more examples of where you can get information from them. Some of them you know. Network for Good is a good one. Is N10. AFP, by the way, is not really a technology organization. It's the Association of Fundraising Professionals. It is the big dog in the field. But I can tell you, online fundraising is, I probably dominate 50% of their discussions these days because it's that important and it's rising. Um, they offer good blogs. They offer good articles and advice. Nonprofit Hub for, um, is good for advice. In fact, there's nonprofit tech for good. I just talked about that in his WordPress. And I would like to mention um, the vendors. Um, Salesforce doesn't have that much of it right now, but Blackboard does. A lot of information on using various CMS systems uh, and integrating them with their products. All right, here we are, the bleeding edge. Um, data visualization. I'm actually going to suggest a few tools here. And, um, and that's because it, it's th so important that my opinion, in my opinion, there aren't really that many good plugins available through WordPress right now. There are some that do some basic things. So let's start off with a good data visualization, a good infographic about WordPress itself. Um, that's what we're talking about. At a glance, you get a good picture. By the way, I love the use of, of graphs, symbols, bold type as a, as a way of getting people to understand a situation at a glance. Um, and they compare them there to Drupal and Joomla. So, lots of advice out there. Here are some guidelines. Again, basically my summation of what I've been learning as I'm working with nonprofits and delving deeper into the field. First and foremost, when you create a visualization, but especially an infographic, does it actually answer a question that needs to be asked? Is it, is it a question people are asking? You can't, that's not a technical question. That's a, that's an, a, a matter of understanding your um, constituents. Are they wondering about something? Do they, do they need to know a complex, how, how to understand a complex situation and need to know quickly? You gotta test. Like most things, you gotta test to be sure. Um, and that means testing with various groups to see if they like it or not. Don't rely on your own judgment. That's something I've learned to my detriment many times. I finally have sunk in. You really should test. It's a little bit of advice from some, some designers I've talked to. Avoid 3D charts and stack charts because online they tend 
to lead to misinterpretation unless they're really, really, really well done, very crisp. Um, 3D in particular often, often causes lots of confusion because you never know how it's going to look on certain monitors. Finally, uh, maps are cool. Maps are great, but they're even cooler when interactive. I've done a lot of that with um, in my public policy work. Um, it's a lot of work. Um, but when you can provide um, insight through maps, um, it, it's, it's terrific. Infographics tell stories. That's really what they're all about. But remember, they need reality checks. Um, because, because they tell a story relatively clearly, if it's not accurate, someone's going to catch you on it. So make sure your facts are accurate, your numbers are accurate. Um, you know, the, the look and feel of the infographic is fine, but if the content isn't dead on, you're going to hear about it, guaranteed. The goal, of course, is new insights. Any infographic should provide insights that can't be gained quickly through any other part of the site. Um, give me an example. Here's the thing about trafficking. Very simple. Makes the point. Use of a bold graphic. This is one about water. Oh, oil consumption, excuse me. Oil consumption and, and very simply uh, shows who's using up all the oil. This is one that every nonprofit should consider. It may look boring, but they are using this to demonstrate their fiscal stewardship of the money that is donated to them. And right now in the nonprofit world, that kind of transparency is essential. This is just one example. I just brought it up here simply so it doesn't have to be dramatic if it tells an important point. And believe me, the people who are your major funders, the foundations, the angel donors, they'll appreciate this because that's what they want to see. I don't even know myself if this is enough for them, but it's something they need to see. Too many organizations are sticking with charts, Excel sheets, and that type of thing. Really need to dramatize it. I like this simply because it's simple. And um, the spelling of leukemia, my wife reminded me, it sounds like it's a European organization, but it's, um, it shows how many, uh, what, what the treatments for leukemia have done in raising the mortality for children. Pretty impressive. There's our elephant. Must be elephant day for me. Uh, I'm only showing this because um, you can do a video graphic, uh, you know, data visualization. The, um, I don't even know what this one was, but I think they would save the elephants. And, you know, but you can use graphics interactively portrayed without, but not interactively, but you can animate them effectively on the uh, on video. Now, here are some resources I found work really well, and so far they have worked really well with WordPress. The first is Infogram. I love this one. It's free, it's simple, and it's surprisingly good for online work because infographic programs can be used and they can create high, high, um, <clears throat> high density images for use in publications and so on. But I found this is really very reliable for online work. It's free. What else do you want? Um, and it's pretty easy to use. Anybody can learn to use it. Um, I've made the mistake of turning some people onto it and they've wasted afternoons on it. But, but it's, you know, it's fun. Easily is, is simpler too. It features a drag, a drag and drop approach, which isn't quite as elegant, I don't think. And um, it's nice, it's very popular. Um, they have a modest selection of what they unfortunately call themes, as opposed to you know, visual themes, get it? Um, it caused my wife to wince, but there it is. Um, it, but they're good. They're very reliable, and it's still free. I don't know how long it's going to remain free. And here's the big dog, and it's called PictoChart, but it charges. You can get a free limited selection, but if you really want to dig into the power of this, you have to fork over 30, 40 bucks a month or something. What I like about it now is they've just introduced search-friendly graphics. And if you're doing uh, addressing issues, that most nonprofits address. That's really important because you want your graphics to show up in searches. Um, it's very popular. It's used by a lot of corporate organizations. Um, I will say that the what I've heard from others is they find uh, the themes range from pretty good to meh, boring. But it's reliable and it's a huge, um, it's very popular. There is WordPress, of course, but boy, I found a very modest selection of very basic plugins there. Um, 
Now, a word about pro pro uh, nonprofit blogging. <clears throat> I, this was a section I was going to include in here, but then I figured this is WordPress. You guys know about blogging. Um, we could spend a whole day on nonprofit uh, content and how to develop it and the types of types of um, uh, the types of approaches to blogging. But uh, I'm not going to do that here. I'd rather talk about and have you answer some questions in a few minutes or ask some questions in a few minutes. We're getting down to the end. It's my pet peeve. Um, <clears throat> online newsrooms and contact. This is essential. It's absolutely essential. And as I ask you, so why are they so commonly missing or hidden? Um, a newsroom, a good nonprofit newsroom, really is designed for all stakeholders, but especially the media. You want media coverage, they're going to go to your newsroom. And if it should have really great information, it should be available quickly, elegantly, and well organized. In particular, current news, uh, press releases, any kind of alerts. Um, all forms of current media you might have, any kind of video, any kind of infographic should be available through the, web, through the newsroom. You need fact sheets. Fact sheet can be a simple online HTML thing or it can be a printed thing they can print out about the organization that they can see at a single page glance. Um, you can do backgrounders on the organization and management. Um, a backgrounder is a document that most PR people and media people will, would call a white paper about the organization. Um, you don't have to have it, but I recommend that you do, um, because it enables you to tell your, tell your story in a factual way using AP-style journalistic approaches that journalists really appreciate. And you will find, if you do it right, just like a good press release, if you're succinct and clear in that, you'll find that kind of description ends up in any coverage of your organization, if it's done objectively without any puffery. Uh, and done according to AP style. By the way, if you're going to be doing any sort of communication on the web for the media, I urge you to get the AP style book. Um, Associated Press is the gold standard. All journalists adhere to it. Um, I won't get into, you know, issues of the Oxford comma and all that stuff. Let other people argue about that. But the AP style book is very important. It is a guide to being succinct and communicating in the, in the media's language, and they want to see it in the newsrooms online. They'll tell you as much. Um, you need your financials in some form. Infographics, but also documents or an annual report available in your newsroom, any infographics. And if you can, it isn't bragging to put your news archive when you've been covered before, either through links or other clips and that type of thing. That's the newsroom. But this one gets me. How often have you gone to a website, nonprofit or otherwise, but a lot of nonprofits ones? looking to contact the organization and spend five, ten minutes figuring it out. I am. Um, it has to be easy to find. Um, and it should be complete. Contact shouldn't be, you know, a form, that, you know, a fill-in form that's, a, that, that's based on the website. You should, they should have good information. In particular, if you're serious about media, media relations and being in the news, you have to have a media context, someone who knows how to deal with the media. And I need to emphasize that person has to be available. This is a PR tactic. It has to be available 24 hours. Not always pleasant, but you really have to be, particularly if your organization deals with anything that might have a crisis, you know, child situations and that type of thing. You need a development contact, someone to con for funders or interested parties to contact you for um, regarding donations. Now, office address and phones, I I'm shocked. It just doesn't appear in, all the, all, in every website. And the hours of operation. Okay, this is why I think WordPress really is sort of the best of the main three CMSs out there in this category. Um, it's journal-based, which is the blog, template-based CMS, and it has an enormous low-cost support ecosystem. That's really it in a nutshell. So, discussion. We have, what, five minutes? I'd like to throw some things out there, see what you people think. When should a nonprofit handle things internally? When should it seek outside expertise, much of which would be found in this conference? Should some people in the organization get a modest amount of HTML and CSS education? That's what I'm doing right now. I'm getting into that. I'm learning CSS because it's, it helps me uh, work quickly when things need to be done with my with people I work with as, a, uh, as I'm embedded with these nonprofits. Who should own the site? Develop it? Should it be communications? Should it be the executive office? And any other thoughts you have? So, with that, I open it up to you folks. Any questions at all? Yes. 
Um, I have a question about embedding the um, process of fundraising into your site. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, if you don't want to pay for the higher level of PayPal, you do have to click a button to check out, and it will take you to the PayPal page. Yeah. Is that okay as long as the actual page where the donation is, yeah. is still a when page? Yeah, when I say embed, if you're going to be using a processing service, they're almost always going to take you outside. That's expected. When I say embedding it, um, it should work seamlessly within the site. It should lead you into a reliable place, um, lead you to that PayPal thing without any question. And, and you need to work with PayPal to make sure that the, the page, the information they see is crystal clear. That's what I call embedding. I guess it's more from a strategic point of view. Too many organizations are getting the site done and said, okay, now we have to think about online fundraising. That's a mistake because it's, not, we, it's, it's no longer acceptable for an organization to have weak online fundraising. It really needs to be part of the mission. Yes? All right, I'm going to look at this from the opposite side of the point. Me as a developer coming in to work with a nonprofit, how do I get them to understand that there is a cost to creating this um, I'm going to say, yeah, I got a microphone for you. Here you go. Um, I'm coming into this from the opposite side, from a developer standpoint, and my question is, how do you get the nonprofit on board with the idea that the website is going to be a long-term benefit to them, and that they actually need to devote some funding to creating and, and getting this web platform up. How do you get them on board? How do you get them on board? Well, again, it goes back to the very first thing I said, and you need to go to the board itself. You need to pro then provide them with information that says, this is, and it, this is, I think they need to help you establish the need for whatever it is they want to do. You need to let, let them look at the options, particularly with WordPress, and see what it would cost to get there. But you need to provide, I would, if I were you, I would provide some cost-benefit information for them to present to the board. You get the board on board, you're in, really. And the board is always looking for reliable vendors. They, they, you'd be surprised how many boards are out there sort of wagging fingers when something's not done right. Well, you donate your services. Yeah, I've been there too. Yeah. Oh, make, yeah. make sure you don't do that. Yeah. Don't, don't make sure you don't do that. that. <laughs> Ever. Yes? I was just wondering, can you explain more your... I was just wondering if you could explain more your question about um, HTML and CSS education for, is for the people who work at the nonprofit? Um, yeah, people like me actually is what I'm thinking of. People who need a modicum of expertise, nowhere near what a developer would have. But um, if someone doesn't like the way a page is sort of sitting, something's not right, I'm able to go in there and fiddle with things and change the theme a little bit without wrecking it. Um, that's a question. Do you, would a developer want that? I don't know. I bet you'd be a little worried about that. <laughs> yeah. I've been in this both positions, and I, I've seen I've seen the results. Yeah. Any other questions? Yes. I have a client who's been uh, complaining about uh, a, a program called uh, Donor Perfect. Oh yeah, I've heard of it. And I didn't know whether you had an experience with that, and, and should I? Because I'm moving them to a WordPress site, and what your suggestion is? Well, you the use platform for a your uh, first word. One of the first words sums up what I've heard. Complaining. Um, I'm not trying to knock it. There's a lot of these smaller systems out there, and people get sold a bill of goods on them. Never having worked with Donor Perfect, I don't know what the problem would be. In general, they come in with high expectations and find out the program has limitations, especially in terms of synchronizing with its other business systems. The data interchange problem, uh, I've been in technology for over 30 years, and back when I worked with software, the, you know, we're always talking about why can't we get you know these systems to talk to each other with data interchange. Three decades later, we're still doing it. I don't get it, but it's out there. And these smaller um, platforms are really the main culprits. Um, I'm not recommending that they dump it, but I, I recommend that they look at why the problem is, what the problem is, and what the alternatives might be. Honestly, if I were if I were a nonprofit now, I'd be going with Salesforce. Go to the foundation, get those ten free seats, get a good Salesforce developer to work with me. Get something that worked. Yes. How important do you think it is to have? Sorry. Well, we need to be able to use the site. How important do you think is it um, to have a dynamic? like a, a current news window or something like that versus, you know, some of the 
at sample sites you showed were just like a nice image with a few buttons and a call to action button. Is it important to have a dynamic, ever-changing thing on the home page? A lot of those were dynamic and changing, by the way, particularly the ones with the big images. I would say it's really important if it's valid. Okay, I think um, I think we're done, right? I, no more questions? Yeah. Unfortunately, that's it. Uh, if you have any other questions, I'm around. And um, I'd be glad to uh, send you any information. There I am. <laughs>